face it, you're never going to get my power. Do I look like I need your power? So, you're probably wondering, who the hell is this guy and why is Paramount kicking his ass? I'll leave the explanation for later. Two years ago, I reviewed the Sonic movie. What could have been a disaster with the first trailer involving a few surface level problems, mostly focused on Sonic's design, became a success thanks to Paramount listening to the feedback and redesigning Sonic. And when you have a successful video game movie, you naturally need to make a sequel. And there were even two scenes that foreshadowed a sequel. Eggman transformed into what he looks like in the games, and Tails makes his debut. Released in 2022, we got our sequel, which had excitement for four things. Tails, the Chaos Emeralds, which were originally going to be in the first movie, but were saved for more build-up, Eggman coming back for revenge, and of course, Idris Elba as Knuckles. And with that, not only did it turn out to be just as awesome as the original, there are some instances where the sequel surpasses the first movie. And with the third installment coming out at the end of this year, I'll review the movie in preparation for it. So what's the sequel about? Well, it all starts with Dr. Eggman stuck in Mushroom Hill Zone, using a signal that catches the attention of our dear friend Knuckles, who would later team up with the Doctor. Meanwhile, Sonic is still adjusting to using his powers and barely succeeds in stopping a crime. Tom and Maddie are off to Hawaii to go to Rachel's wedding, leaving Sonic alone in the house. Suddenly, he ends up being taken out by Knuckles, only for Tails to save him. The two work together to try to find the Master Emerald before Knuckles and Eggman do. So, what did I think of this movie? It's just as awesome as the first movie. So it's time to go fast and start my awesome points and areas of improvement. Area of improvement number one, I'm kind of split on the dance-off scene. I do like how it develops Sonic and Tails' relationship, but at the same time, I thought, why doesn't Sonic just use his super speed from the bar in the last movie to get the map of the Master Emerald and run off? But then I thought, Sonic has to shelter somewhere. I may like the song they play, but I also understand why people would cringe at the dance-off scene. Area of improvement number two, the soundtrack is not as good as the first movie. I know this is more likely a nitpick, but some pop music was a bit out of place. They used Tricky in the car chase scene which Sonic attempts to stop, but Sonic is a 90s icon, not an 80s icon. It would have been great to hear more rock music for the Sonic scenes, while Knuckles gets the rap music like in the games. Speaking of which, they didn't play the orchestra Death Egg Robot theme for the climax, which naturally would have fitted since the robot looks like the Death Egg Robot from Sonic 2. Ah, I can't swim. Well, actually you can, you just play panic-provoking music whenever you're about to drown. Wait, was that played in the movie? I wish they scattered more remixes slash renditions of old Sonic music from the games. Case in point... Area of improvement number three, Sonic and Knuckles was a bit too short. What we got did work, but given how they marketed it to be the biggest fight in the movie, Sonic fans like me expected the fight to be a bit longer. Area of improvement number four, which will not be any better when Sonic 3 comes out, is the most obvious, Gun. For those who don't know, Gun is the Guardian Unit of Nations. It turned out the wedding was a charade so they could capture Sonic should he show up. It's stupid because not only was it pure luck that Sonic showed up from the snowy mountains, it's also stupid because they said he, along with Tom, were the cause of the problems from the first movie when they weren't, but they knew it was Sonic who stopped Eggman in the first place. <gasps> I also don't get their plan. What would they have done if Sonic didn't turn up in Hawaii? Keep the charade after the wedding? Give up the plan? Did they have a contingency plan? What do you expect from Gun? They were boneheaded and useless in the games, and they're just as useless here. I guess I was just hoping for an acknowledgement of their failures, but they haven't been painted in a positive light to prove that they have changed their ways. Before we go over the awesome points, I'm going to go over what this opening skit meant. This guy right here is Ken Penders, and he's a former writer of the Archie comics for Sonic. I won't go into full detail for those who have no interest in the comics, but to put a long story short, 
He intends on suing Paramount because them supposedly stealing his idea of Knuckles having a father in this movie. Not quite sure how this will work out for him since he doesn't own Knuckles the Echidna. If you'd like to see a dedicated video about him, let me know in the comments. Enough about the improvements, here's the awesome points. Awesome point number one, a better opening. Unlike the rushed opening from the last movie, there's a much better pace in the sequel. We see what Eggman's up to on Mushroom Hill as he cleverly plans a way to escape. And when we are introduced to Knuckles straight away, and we even get good world building in the process. Awesome point number two, Sonic and Tails' friendship. Sonic and Tails are a known duo in the games, and the way their friendship blossoms is both wholesome and adorable. Getting into the pub in cute snow gear, and there's even a scene where Sonic gives Tails a blanket so Tails gives Sonic his Tails as a blanket. Isn't that adorable? Awesome point number three, Idris Elba as Knuckles. I really love Idris Elba's voice as Knuckles. It gives off the chilling yet naive voice while still keeping the strong but dull personality within Knuckles' character. I also love the solid arc from being rivals to being good friends. After they save each other, Sonic uses the words of advice he got from Tom to inspire Knuckles. When Tails shows up, Sonic and Knuckles agree to work together, so Knuckles doesn't have to be alone anymore. After they stop Eggman, the movie ends with them all playing a fun game of baseball, and they go and get ice cream together. Awesome point number four, Rachel's character has improved since last time. In the first movie, she had no character other than that stupid, telling Maddie she should divorce Tom joke. This time, Rachel is better, and has a point to being in the story. Her jokes are a bit more funny, and even helps her sister release Tom and Sonic. Although, her worst scene has to be the argument with Tom with the ring, making it awkward and uncomfortable for a Sonic movie. I mean, I do feel sorry for her being lied to, and I sort of liked the golf buggy scene, and it was sweet that she and Randall made up in the end. Awesome point number five, Jim Carrey's zaniness as Dr. Eggman has been cranked up to 10 this time. His performance was just as funny as the first movie, and he still shows that he's a threat. Stabbing Knuckles in the back by taking the Master Emerald for himself, and he even has a cool and funny form as Emerald Eggman and uses it to build the Death Egg robot in the climax. Awesome point number six, the humor, visuals, and references to the games are improved. With the humor, when some of it doesn't fall flat, it's really funny. The human characters have some good funny interactions despite being sidetracked to the background while still serving a purpose in the story. Jim Carrey's performance might carry the humor, pun intended, but I also like Knuckles' naiveness and lack of understanding of Earth customs, Wade's antics, Sonic's quips, and even the jokes from the battle scenes. The visuals in Sonic and Knuckles' battle shows a huge swirl of blue and red to show their evenly matched powers. The character animations make them just as expressive as in the first movie. With the references, there's nice callbacks to previous games that'll give out not only a bit of nostalgia, but also to make it part of its own universe. The Chaos Emeralds, Knuckles' Clan, Labyrinth Zone, and even... I gotta go fast. It's an overused meme. That is also a reference to Sonic X and is still good regardless of how it's used because it's still badass. Awesome point number seven, Agent Stone actually has a character in this movie. I didn't mention him in my review of the previous movie because I thought there was not much to him other than he's just the minion. Though it was interesting that Eggman has a human assistant rather than a robot assistant. In the second movie, he's a fun character now. He's basically in love with Eggman. You see this when he draws a picture of him and Eggman in froth with little hearts in them. He even offers to come with Eggman on the Death Egg robot. Awesome point number eight, Supersonic. The Chaos Emeralds were going to be in the first movie, but Jeff Fowler chose not to in order to take time on world building and give them more build up. I gotta say, you made the right call, Jeff. Now with a sequel making it important, makes the stakes really big. And when Sonic becomes Supersonic, not only is that badass, but also extremely cool. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is an awesome sequel that manages to almost surpass the first movie in my opinion. I'm glad that not only do we have a good sequel, but I'm also hyped for the third movie, and even the series on Paramount+. And since we're going to get both of those this year, I'm all the more excited for it. I give Sonic the Hedgehog 2 a 9.5 out of 10 with the ribbon of awesomeness.